Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we've got a half times three quarters times five over six and so on, all the way up to 9,999 over 10,000. We want to show that this product is less than one over 100. There's a nice insight we can take which can help us get started on the problem. And that's to think of our product as we've got a half, we've got three quarters, but there's actually some fractions missing here. Because we can consider instead a half times two thirds. We add in a two thirds, we keep our three quarters, but let's add in four fifths, we keep our five sixths and so on. And we keep going all the way up, adding in all of these where you've got your even number over your odd denominator until we get up to 9,999 over 10,000. So you can see here there's lots of nice cancellation structure. The 6 would cancel with the next term, and even the 9,999 would cancel with the previous term. So you can see that all of this is just equal to 1 over 10,000. And this can help us now in understanding an upper bound for our original product, because we can think of all of this as being our original product, so half times 3 quarters, all of the ones where we've got an odd number over an even number. And then we multiply this by all of the new terms that we've added in. So we're adding in 2 thirds times 4 over 5 and so on, all the way up to 9,998 over 9,999. So if we want to compare this second product to our first product, there's actually a small problem here, which is that our first product, if you count, has actually 5,000 terms, but there's one fewer term here. There's only 4,999 4, terms in our second product. So let's just consider now adding in another term so that we can at least compare this product to our new product. So if we were to do instead our old product, our original, with all of the odd over even numbers, and then if we just compare this now to, we're going to stick with two thirds times four over five and so on, but we go all the way up to 10,000 over 10,001, you can see now we've actually got the same number of terms in each product. And you can see that the same cancellation structure as before, this would just be equal to one over 10,001 rather than one over 10,000. And now if we examine the second product very closely, you'll see, for example, we've got two thirds here, whereas in our original product, we've got one half. So you've got a bigger fraction in your second product. The next one, four fifths, is going to be bigger than the three quarters in our first product. So this is a generalization. I suppose here you can say k over k plus one is always going to be less than the fraction you would get by taking the next biggest numbers. So less than k plus one over k plus two. And the upshot of this is it tells us that, for example, here our 10,000 over 10,001 is bigger than our original 9,999 over 10,000 terms. So actually everything in our second product is going to be bigger than everything in our first product. So then if we were to replace this second product by our original product, then we would just be left with, on the left hand side, we'd have a half times all the way up to 9,999 over 10,000 squared. So we've got two copies now of our original product. You can see now we've made everything smaller, so this is now less than one over 10,001. So let's write this as our original product squared is less than 1 over 10,001. So here we can take square roots, but actually if you notice that 1 over 10,001 is less than 1 over 10,000, we'll get a nice result when we take square roots. So if we take square roots now, we can conclude then that our original product, a half times 3 quarters and so on, all the way up to 9,999 over 10,000 is indeed less than the square root of 1 over 10,000, which is equal to 1 over 100. So then you can see that we've shown that our original product is less than 1 over 100. And now we'll just see how this result can be generalised to not just a product up to 10,000, but a product up to 2n. So here we've got the product of all of our odd numbers, 1 half times 3 quarters and so on, up to 2n minus 1 over 2n, so the product of all of our odd numbers divided by the next even number. We want to show that this is less than 1 over the square root of 2n. So here we can use the same setup to get us started. So we can consider the fact that our product 
from k equals 1 up to n of 2k minus 1 over 2k, the product of all of our odd over even terms, this is going to be less than this new product that we introduced, the product from k equals 1 to n of the even number divided by the next biggest odd number. So here, this is just taking advantage of the fact that 2k minus 1 over k, if we then make each of the numbers bigger in this, keeping the numbers consecutive, 2k over 2k plus 1 is always going to be bigger than 2k minus 1 over 2k. So this is like how 3 quarters is less than 4 fifths, and it's also 5 over 6 is less than 6 over 7, and so on. So this gives us our first step, that our original product is less than the product of all of these slightly bigger fractions. And then if we multiply on both sides of this inequality by our original product, we'll get on the left-hand side our original product squared now, so the product of 2k minus 1 over 2k, where this is all squared. This is now less than our original product from k equals 1 up to n of 2k minus 1 over 2k multiplied by this new product, so the product of 2k over 2k plus 1, going from k equals 1 up to n again here. And it's not particularly obvious what's going on on the right-hand side, but this is actually just, if we go with k is 1, you have 1 over 2, then k is 1 in the second one, we have 2 over 3, then k is 2, we get 3 over 4. It's the exact same cancellation structure as we had before, just using this product notation. And this will go all the way up to our biggest term at the very end, will be 2n, when k is n, divided by 2n, plus 1. So once again, we get all of this cancellation, our 2s, 3s, 4s, all the way up to this 2n cancels. You can see then this is equal to 1 over 2n plus 1. And 1 over 2n plus 1 we can notice is actually less than 1 over 2n, just so we get a slightly more satisfying formula in the end. And then if we take square root, so we know that the square of our original product is less than 1 over 2n, then we can conclude, taking square roots, that our original product is indeed less than the square root of 1 over 2n. So the product from k equals 1 to n of 2k minus 1 over 2k is indeed less than 1 over the square root of 2n. Then we can see now how our original result can be generalised.